Hey guys, how's it going? It's 8-Bit Eric. Today we're going to talk about Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, when this was announced, there was so much speculation and hype leading up to it. People were like, what's Nintendo going to do for the 35th anniversary of the Super Mario series? And when the rumors started going around that 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy would be in a All-Stars type of pack, I was intrigued. I really wanted this, so I was glad when Nintendo revealed that this would really be happening. So these are three of the greatest Super Mario games of all time. And the main reason why I was excited about it is that all three of these games, while they are 3D Mario games, play entirely different. They all have their own unique and special gameplay mechanics, plot points, and just different ways that Mario actually plays in the game. So... Let's go ahead and talk about my thoughts on this. I've had a lot of time to sink into it. I've been streaming it like crazy almost every day since it came out. I've not, I haven't played a Nintendo Switch game as much as I've played this one. So let's go ahead and just begin with the things that initial impressions that caught my attention that I liked or didn't like with this game. To begin with, the one thing that I did not like was that the case is essentially empty other than the cart and some artwork behind it. I feel Nintendo should have given Mario a little bit more love than that. Maybe a book, maybe some kind of like instructional guide or some kind of like poster. Anything would have been nice. I know they're doing a whole bunch of other stuff for celebration, but it didn't come in any kind of collector's edition, no special package, anything like that, which kind of made me upset in that regard. But anyways, the user interface when you begin the game is also an eyesore. You know, the NES Classic, the SNES Classic all had a real good looking user interface. So this has the three games and, and it just doesn't look right. You have like the different box type. The N64 type is squatty and horizontal. Then you got the Wii case and you have the GameCube case. And now all three of them are just different sizes. I would have actually preferred to just have an icon or some kind of like square logo or something to make them fit uniform. And then you also have the three soundtracks from the three games, which is a nice touch. Uh, you got a lot of tracks, I think over 100 tracks from all the games. You know all three of these are legendary as far as the soundtracks go, especially Super Mario Galaxy. But yeah, just aesthetically pleasing to look at on the user interface of the menu. Not exactly, but it is nice to see the description, how the games are described on it as you hover through each of them and stuff. And at any time, you're able to actually access the menu very easily with pushing the minus button on the Nintendo Switch controller. So let's go ahead and start with 64. This one came out in 96, so it's expected that it's aged the worst out of all of them. I mean, this is a 20-year-old Mario game, but to be quite honest, I think it actually holds up really good. They did do slight little texture changes, smoothed out the edges of the polygons and everything. I think it looks really colorful, pretty vibrant. To be honest, it's not half bad looking. I think it's actually held up. Uh, it did age kind of crummy as far as camera goes. If I was to say anything with this version that completely irritated me the most is the way the camera moves you got to remember the n64 controller had yellow c buttons that were used for maneuvering the camera while well, on this one you have to use the right analog stick on your joy con or your switch pro controller or whatever device you're playing with um, other than that i think mario's jumping mechanics his long jumps the way he moves feels pretty solid now this game was scaled up to 720p uh, which is higher resolution than what the Nintendo uh, the Nintendo 64 was. But it would have been nice if it was put all the way up to 1080. Not all these games are in glorious 1080p. Mario 64 was not. The other glaring problem that this one didn't have is they didn't make it in widescreen. They went through the effort to put Super Mario Sunshine in widescreen. Like a legitimate widescreen. It's kind of weird that they didn't do that to Super Mario 64. But other than that, the game... Seems like it's pretty true to its form. I know there was some concern because it is emulation and people thought the game just wouldn't feel right. I think as far as N64 emulation, this proves that Nintendo can put it on the Nintendo Switch and they successfully developed an emulator to run 64 games. So while the game isn't on authentic hardware, it's not an authentic um, 
port of the game itself. I'm just excited overall to be able to play this. I've had a lot of memories with Super Mario 64. I remember the day I got it and the day I got the 64, I just played for several hours and I actually did it again. I played through like 75 stars straight on a live stream for like eight hours and just reminisced about it. I mean, it has all the quirkiness from back in the day. It felt like I was a kid again. So 64, I believe, is pretty good as far as everything goes, other than the janky camera and the way that widescreen is not available on that. Now, Super Mario Sunshine. I actually have not played this game since I first beat it in 2002. This is my first time revisiting it, so I forgot a lot about it. But I was quickly reintroduced to how challenging this game is. This always gets a bad rap as being one of the worst Mario games. I don't understand that. I still think it's really solid and a lot of fun to play. But of course, they did take out things like Mario's long jump isn't in here. And you also have the flood mechanics. Now, they did make this in 1080p. They have some kind of weird smoothing filter on top of it too. So it looks kind of uh, soft to the eyes. But I think it aged well as far as the way that the game looks and sounds and plays. Um... Other than the flood mechanics being kind of weird when it comes to spraying it and aiming using the shoulder buttons and the right analog stick, um, it just it feels a lot like like it's aged pretty decent. Like if if you were to play this game today for the first time, you couldn't tell that it was over ten years old or fifteen years old or I don't even know what my math is. But again, really underrated title as far as GameCube titles go. I don't personally understand the hate. Um, I guess the one thing that I would have to complain about this game is the challenge on it. Like these secret stages where you have no flood and you're jumping and doing parkour and all these stages and stuff just irritate the living crud out of me. Like where I was rage quitting on stream. If you watch my stream, I beat up Baby Yoda. That's how frustrated I get. But I think Sunshine actually... You know, even though it has the water spray mechanic and tried to change things up from Super Mario 64, did a pretty good job of being ported over to the 3D All-Star. So for the future, will GameCube games be coming over? Sure. Now, the last game, Super Mario Galaxy, I know right off the bat, people had a lot of complaints that Galaxy 1 was the only one included that Galaxy 2 should have been on. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Super Mario Galaxy is probably one of the greatest Mario masterpieces of all time. Uh, one of my most favorite games of all time. It's easily in my top 10. Best orchestra. Sure, the game changes things about a little bit with like the gravity and stuff like that. And, the, you know, going upside down and inverted controls and stuff. But I was curious to see how this game would perform without a Wii remote. Because you got to remember the Wii remote, it was all motion controls to like shake and spin and capture the stars and stuff. Well, I'm proud to say I played with a pro controller and the motion controls that are built into the uh, the pro controller you can actually use to uh, grab the star pieces that show up on the actual screen. And they did a change. You can push X or Y in order to have Mario spin. So you don't have to do motion controls at all. It's also been optimized to work with Joy-Cons, which for the most part, they do their job. It does, of course, take some getting used to because this game essentially had to be reworked to not use Wii remotes. But I feel Nintendo did a great job. On top of that, this game looks absolutely beautiful. It's hard to imagine that this was a Wii game. I don't remember it looking this fantastic, but on the Nintendo Switch version, my gosh, it legitimately looks like you're looking at a Pixar movie or something like that. Nintendo did a great job making Mario and Rosalina and, and the princess and Bowser and everybody in this game looking great. The levels, just as classic as ever. I didn't notice any kind of like real frame rates or slowdown in regards to Super Mario Galaxy or any of the games, to be honest. I didn't see any real slowdown or frame issues or anything like that. But then again, I'm not really techie, but it was really cool getting to go back and try these games again. So for the full price, I've seen people asking, is it worth the $60 for this? Well, I got mine from Walmart. Walmart sells games cheaper. It was $49.99 where I got it. Came with the stickers as the pre-order bonus. So if you are going to get games, no matter if it's Mario All-Stars or, you know, anything, go to Walmart. They're usually discounted there. So for $49.99, I would say hell yeah. And even for $60, you are getting three of the greatest games of all time. It's $20 a piece. That's cheaper than going out and buying them. I mean, Sunshine alone is like $80. 
So it is an affordable option. You get to take it around on your Nintendo Switch anywhere. Portable Super Mario Galaxy? Come on, guys. Uh, who wouldn't like it? So, of course, I'm going to say this is actually the most fun I've had in a while. I mean, I've been grinning from ear to ear while I play these games on streams, enjoying talking about these games with you guys. Honestly, it's well worth it, in my opinion. But I'm going to go ahead and end the review there, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, as always. I appreciate y'all. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next time. Bye. Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description. You want to become part of the hashtag 8BE Nation, guys? Well, be sure to pick up your official merch now available online. Link is below in the description. We got classic t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, and even women's apparel. Don't forget, pick up your official merch now. And while you're at it, guys, feel free to watch the next video or why don't you catch up on one that you might have previously missed. Thanks again, guys, for all the support. I couldn't do this without you. You guys are amazing. And don't forget to subscribe and click that like button if you are brand new. Thanks again, guys. Peace out.